Have you ever wondered how to turn back the clock of time? Well, if so, then join us today as Ken Swartz, founder and chief science officer of C60 Purple Power, shares with us his remarkable discovery that reversed his macular degeneration and set him on a path to help people feel empowered to take back control of their health. Welcome to the Inspire Health Podcast. Your life is about to get a whole lot better. Have you ever felt like you tried everything and yet still couldn't find the answers or the solutions that you were seeking? Whether you're dealing with chronic illness, physical or emotional pain, I want you to know that your body is the most sophisticated machine on planet Earth. Your body holds unfathomable wisdom. Trust in it and learn from it. Know that there are answers and there are solutions to your specific health challenges. And we will be uncovering all of them here on the Inspire Health Podcast. I'm so excited to be a part of your healing journey. Your transformation starts now. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the show. And before I get into the episode with Ken Swartz, I just wanted to mention that our series on science, mysticism, and beyond humanity's next phase of evolution had just finished. We just finished our last episode. It was our live event where we had a panel discussion with Huna Flash, Dr. Christiane Northrup, Lynn McTaggart, um, Dr. Todd Ovalcatus, and Roland McCready. And so that was done on Friday, um, Friday, April 2nd. So if you didn't get a chance to see that, go check out the YouTube channel. That's where those live events and the panel discussions are. So all of the regular episodes you'll hear once a week here, but then we tend to get back together again with some of the guests to do a live event or to do a round table discussion where we bring a bunch of the guests back. And this was a really special one as it was the finale of our series. So if you haven't got a chance to see that, go to the YouTube channel at Jason at Dr. Jason Loken ND, and you can watch all of those on the live section for YouTube. Now, before we get into the episode, I want to talk a little bit about mental health. A lot of people that have seen me know that I have a focus where I look at mental health and work with a lot of patients with conditions like stress and anxiety and depression and ADHD and autism and even upwards to things like bipolar and schizophrenia. And one of the things I talk about a lot with mental health is that there's several categories that need to be addressed. So Number one, I tend to look at things like the Walsh mental health approach, and that's looking at advanced nutrient therapies. So it's looking at very targeted biochemical imbalances that then need to be addressed. And there's certain patterns that we look for that can basically create havoc with a lot of the brain chemistry, things like dopamine and serotonin and norepinephrine and GABA. And when we know what to look for, then we can start to incorporate a nutritional intervention based on your individual biochemistry and start to get things back on track. That's usually one of the first places I look for, for people that have had ongoing symptoms of anxiety, depression, especially if you see some family tree patterns. If you've got some epigenetic patterns throughout the family where you can see some of these things that have traveled throughout different generations, then a lot of times that's a big piece that needs to be worked with for people. Now, outside of that, the other part would be gut health. That would be number two. So it'd be looking at the gut. And this could be everything from as simple as dysglycemia, where blood sugar levels are going up and down. And that can create a lot of havoc for people. And even the Walsh Research Institute, they actually found, I think it was about 30% of kids with ADHD or 35% with learning mood disabilities, that they all had severe dysglycemia that was creating trouble. So just stabilizing blood sugar. And then outside of that, it would be looking at things like food allergies, gut biome, imbalances in the gut flora, and different things along those lines. Then we move into a couple of other areas. The other two areas would be number three would be self-regulation. And that would be looking at how the nervous system, if we can get out of fight or flight and actually into rest and digest. And there's certain ways that we can monitor that and that we can work with that. And that essentially really helps us with the self-regulation part. And so a lot of times we, a lot of people really are stuck in sort of that fight or flight response, whether it's too high or it's been burnt out but they essentially can't get back into a self-regulatory pattern again, literally with their nervous system. And then the fourth part I would usually talk about would be mind, body, spirit. So that would be 
can we actually work with emotions? You know, can we get back into the body? Can we feel what needs to be felt? Can we literally detoxify the emotional burden that we're holding on? Can we make sense of it? Can we move up in the scale of consciousness and see things from a different perspective or a different lens in how we're viewing our life? Can we make sense of some of the traumas that we've experienced? So there's a lot of pieces that go on to it. And one of the pieces recently that I have started to incorporate now is particularly looking at inflammation. And particularly inflammation is very much correlated with things like depression, anxiety, and some of these other problems. So let me pull this up for one sec. So just to give you an idea, here's an article in Psychology Today talking about the brain on fire, depression and inflammation. According to the World Health Organization, depression is the leading cause of disability. Unfortunately, 30 to 60% of patients are not responsive to available antidepressant treatments. In other words, 40 to 70% of patients are not helped by existing treatments. Now, one of their areas that they're looking at is inflammation. So there is growing evidence that inflammation can exacerbate or even give rise to depressive symptoms. Now, inflammation can come from a lot of different places. Being exposed to things like bacteria, viruses, toxins, parasites, all of these types of things can tend to cause an immunological reaction that triggers inflammation. So you get some people that have ongoing infections of some sort, then that can actually be pro-inflammatory and cause troubles. I would say a lot of things outside of even looking at any type of infection would be, first place I would start would be looking at things like in our diet, what are we taking in? Is our lifestyle inflammatory? What are the foods we eat? Are we eating clean water? Are we managing stress? Well, all of these things are first line things to start with to see if we are creating inflammation. Foods probably being the number one that you can start with. Do a diet that is a anti-inflammatory diet. You could check that up on the, on the internet quite easily and break down the key things that you're taking out. You're basically taking out those primary allergenic foods and certain foods that tend to trigger more inflammation in some people, like nightshades, for example. And nightshades being tomato, potato, bell peppers, paprika, and eggplant would be the big ones. So that would be a place where you could start, you know, just to kind of begin the process of trying to remove some of that inflammatory burden. Another study, depression and inflammation, an intricate relationship. And this is basically showing that there's plenty of experimental and clinical evidence showing that inflammatory mediators induce neurovegetative and psychological symptoms of depression. And so again, inflammation is a big deal. So outside of what you can do to mitigate the inflammation. This is when I talk about pulling the logs from the fire. The first thing you wanna do is, can you actually get rid of the burden that doesn't need to be there? And that's all the fundamentals that we talk about. And then outside of that, it's building resilience. And when I talk about building resilience, outside of removing the things that aren't working for you, what can you do to support? So one of the main things that I think is beneficial at this point is adding in targeted, antioxidant support to help mitigate the symptoms of inflammation. And you're gonna learn a lot about this powerful antioxidant called C60 from Ken Swartz, who is the CEO of C60 Purple Power. And this is a really incredibly powerful antioxidant that can be used to significantly quench some of that free radical load or that oxidative load that's on the body that's often the cornerstone for creating so much inflammation. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode because we get into lots of different things. We talk about the most powerful antioxidant on the planet. We look at how to discover the treatment for decreasing wrinkles and UV skin damage, how to upregulate mitochondrial function and literally turn back the hands of time so that your biological age is actually becomes much lower than what your age actually is. Now, if you'd like to learn more about C60 Purple Power, just click the link below and that'll take you to the site and you'll get 15% off your order on any of the individual bottles. And I should have it up on the website pretty soon too. So you can just click the link on the website at inspirehealthpodcast.com. And then that will take you directly to the site where you can get 15% off your order. All right, guys, enjoy the show. And if you have any questions, feel free to post comments on the YouTube channel. I'll talk to you soon. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Inspire Health Podcast. And today's guest is Ken Swartz, aka Ken the Scientist. 
So Ken is the founder and chief science officer of C60 Purple Power. This is a health and wellness company committed to delivering the highest quality C60 products available. Ken earned a master's of science degree from the University of Colorado and a bachelor of science in economics from Arizona State University. He spent the early part of his career as a secondary school teacher and is passionate about helping and educating people. Ken has run several research science laboratories over the course of his career and discovered the C60 while developing the Moxie fusion reactor. During his research, he became aware of the powerful free radical neutralizing properties of C60. He first began using C60 as a radiation protectant while leading a fusion reactor project. He noticed after taking C60 for a couple of months that not only was it protecting him from the radiation, it was improving his overall health. So he continued taking it. Sounds like a good idea. About eight months after Ken started taking C60, he was at a routine visit with his optometrist and discovered that his dry macular degeneration had completely disappeared. The doctor was dumbfounded and told him that in all of his years, he had never seen such a miraculous outcome. Due to his healing experience, he decided to dedicate himself to the research, study, and production of C60 Buckminster Fullerenes. In 2016, he founded C60 Purple Power, which offers C60 made with certified organic oils and 99.99% pure sublimated carbon 60, never exposed to solvents and sourced in the U.S. Ken believes that your health is your responsibility, and he is on the mission to help people feel empowered to take back control of their health. Ken, what a, what a pleasure to have you on the show. Glad to be on. <clears throat> I would say your mission and mine sound like really in quite alignment. Um, I'm often talk about the same idea around how do you get back into control of your own body, your own physiology, your own wellness, and then what does that actually mean? How do you live that? Yeah, it's because you're, you know, you're responsible for your own health. Nobody else is going to do that. So, you know, when you're younger, it's, it's not such a big thing, but when you get a few gray hairs and time catches up with you, then you start thinking about, you know, how to improve your health and uh, keep it especially as friends and other relatives, you know, go down, it's kind of, uh, oh, it's something important. That was definitely true. When you're younger, I think we all think we're invincible. And I know that firsthand by having a 16-year-old uh, a stepson who could care less what he eats right at the moment because he doesn't really seem to make any difference. So you'll learn that. I say, give it time. You'll figure it out as you go along. <laughs> now, Ken, I would love to hear your journey a little bit more. I mean, from fusion reactor to healthcare. I, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that journey because that sounds to me like that would have been a pretty remarkable self-discovery to see the changes that you did early on from using C60. Yeah, well, it all started, uh, I'd had macular degeneration and it was getting, you know, it was getting a little bit worse every year and uh, I'm a little nearsighted and that kind of goes with macular degeneration or Drew's as that, that scientific name. It was just dry. And so, but it was always on the back of my mind because if you get older, it gets worse. You know, losing your vision is pretty, uh, a pretty uh, scary concept. So that was always on my back of the mind. And, and uh, the metal oxygen fusion reactor, that's just, I don't know if people know about it, but you know, most people hear about, you know, fusing isotopes of hydrogen together to make energy. Well, you can also fuse metal with uh, oxygen. And on, on the ones we chose, it's, the yields are about one hundredth of a regular fusion, but it's a billion times easier to, use, to do. So we did that experiment, and but in researching it, a lot of people had done similar experiments. It was the late doctor this and the late doctor that, right? I didn't want to become well. I have a doctor, I only have a master of science, but uh, I didn't want to join that list. And so I went looking around for stuff that could protect me against radiation, and I discovered this stuff called carbon sixty, or technically Buckminster Fullerene. And uh, they had done some experiments where they gave like one set of rats C60, the other set of rats, the control rats, got none. They hit them with a, a fatal dose of radiation or multiple fatal doses of radiation. And pretty much all the control rats died right away. And almost all the C60 rats are com completely lived. Uh, and there didn't seem to be any health problems from it. And I said, well, well, this is what I want to do because we didn't really know what was going on with the experiments. And so I, we, I did it for myself and my crew while we were doing the experiments, which turned out successfully. But, uh, and, but I, and after it was over, I just kind of kept taking C60, just on and off. I wasn't very faithful to it. But it seemed to like it got rid of the afternoon blahs, you know, about two o'clock if you eat like a lunch, you know, kind of burns out. That went away. I seemed to get up earlier in the, earlier in the morning with more energy and just overall improvement in health. 
and I wasn't, you know, sure, is it the C60? Is it just whatever? But it was that. And then, uh, then I went into my optometrist, and that's when my dry macular degeneration completely disappeared. And at that point, I, uh, I said, well, this is really important. And also, when I talked to my friend, Gary Rodriguez, he was the electrical engineer on our project. And he had some type 2 diabetes. And he had developed like severe wet macular degeneration. You know, and he, we, can, we actually have a little show called uh, uh, the, on the YouTube channel, C60 Purple Power. You can go to our YouTube channel. And we have a show, Eyes on C60. There's about 50, 60 shows there. And he let us use his before and after pictures. And so he had on the inside of his eyeball just terrible lesions. He was going to lose his vision. You know, he's an engineer. You kind of, that's kind of over for you. And uh, he'd used, uh, he used like a tablespoon of C60 and MCT coconut oil for a year. And, and they were completely gone. All the lesions were gone. The inside of his eyeball looked perfect. You can see the before and after pictures on that show. And, and that kind of, and also, by the way, his type 2 diabetes went away. So... So that was pretty profound, and I'd started making it for friends and family. Obviously, it's something that's it helped a lot of people. And then my alternative healthcare practitioners, you know, I told them about it. They started using it, and their patients started using it. And, uh, and so I was making a bunch of it. I sent it to some internet influencers that I knew that I liked listening to because they'd been having health problems. And one of them came online one time and talked about how it had saved his and his wife's life. And wow. that just sales blew up and that's kind of how the whole company started. It wasn't really a intentional thing in that sense. It was kind of one thing led to the other and the next thing you know. So because C60 is something, it's, you know, there's a lot of supplements you can get, but C60 has, has some pretty solid benefits. And there's a lot of science behind it too, mostly mm -hmm. in test animal cases. There's human test cases going on right now, but they haven't been published yet. Yeah, and it's one of the things I like about it too is there is a fair bit of research wrapped around it uh, that does show a lot of different benefits. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. Initially, for people that aren't too aware of what this even means, can you explain what exactly C60 is and what makes it such a powerful antioxidant? And, and probably even for people that aren't too aware, what does that even mean by an antioxidant? Yeah, well, C carbon 60 is a carbon molecule of 60 atoms. You can see them also behind me on the share screen. And it's shaped like a mini soccer ball. And it was discovered in 1985. By, uh, and then the researchers for their discovery uh, got a Nobel Prize in 1996. Now, it was a new molecule, and nobody knew really a lot about it. It was really hard to make. In fact, still, high purity C60 is more valuable by weight than gold. So it's, it's still not easy to make or purify. And so eventually they figured out ways to manufacture it and they did some test studies. And in one of the test studies, the first ones for toxicity, they actually, the C60 doubled the lifespan of test animals. And at that point, you know, there's been lots and lots of other research on C60 and, uh, and they've had some spectacular health benefits. Now, C60 is hydrophobic, so it doesn't dissolve in water, but it's uh, fat loving. So it likes to hang out with oils lipophilic would be called. And so we dissolve ours in, uh, in various oils, MCT coconut oil, olive oil, and avocado oil. Those are kind of healthy, stable oils for you. And you, you just take uh, usually a teaspoon to a tablespoon a day out of, uh, and, and that's in the morning, by the way. It does have a little bit of a stimulatory effect. A lot of people do the paleo coffee because those are yep. fats you put into your oils and or the and so that's, that's kind of how they started out. And, and I guess I should probably talk about what an antioxidant is. I think a lot of times when people hear antioxidant, we think of things like vitamin C and vitamin E and you know, selenium to help with that, stuff like that. But what is, C6, what is an antioxidant and how is C6 be sort of different from those? Okay, well, well uh, what it is is antioxidants obviously are antioxidation. And basically when our, especially our mitochondria, mitochondria, they're the powerhouses of the cell, they produce 65% of the uh, oxidative radicals in your body. And they're things like super oxygen. That's an oxygen with an extra electron. And when they, and if they are neutralized by an antioxidant, they can go out and do a lot of damage in the cell. They can uh, cross-link proteins. So the protein doesn't work. They can damage DNA, RNA. They can, uh, they tear holes in the, in the membranes of the cells. And especially if you're exercising or have other stress things, and it can just really cause serious damage. And so the body has developed what we call antioxidants to combat this. 
like in the mitochondria, there's two superoxide dismutase, which takes care of superoxygen, and then there's catalase, which takes care of uh, hydrogen peroxide. You've got glutathione, which is like an overall antioxidant. It does takes care of a lot of the hydroxyl radicals. That's it's uh, one of its things. And then there's CoQ10. And of all those three, of all those four antioxidants, only CoQ10 can be can be sub can be taken and get through the, the digestive system of the stomach. All the others, glutathione, SOD, and uh, catalase, they have to be made in the cell. And, but C60 can do the job of SOD, catalase, and uh, in a sense, and, uh, and uh, glutathione. But it's, it's kind of, it's interesting, it's interesting that's a selective antioxidant. And that is it only interacts with super high energy oxidative radicals like superoxygen, a hydroxyl radical, and we think peroxynitrite. Uh, it doesn't interact with there's, but there's, you know, your body needs a certain amount of oxidative radicals and a certain amount of antioxidants. There's a redox oxidative reaction going down there. And so it needs a balance. And so there's certain things like nitrogen oxide that allows your subcapillaries to dilate or contract. You need that, that's really important. And then there's a bunch of other ones the body uses for ox antioxidants and oxidative radicals that the body uses for that signaling. And they're, they have, they're based on like sulfur, zinc, and iron. And they're really important, so you don't wanna wipe them out. That's why sometimes people talk about if you take too much vitamin E or vitamin C, it can actually interfere with the functioning of your body because you've gotten rid of those signaling molecules and uh, by taking too much antioxidants. But that doesn't happen with C60 because it only interacts with like those higher energy oxidative radicals, which aren't used as signaling molecules. They're just purely destructive. And, uh, and, and since they did like a study where they gave the rats were one kilogram, one gram per kilogram of weight, body weight of C60, which, and there was no ill effects at all. They didn't, they were just healthy rats. They probably weren't happy, but they were healthy rats. Whereas if you tried to do that with vitamin D or vitamin E, or maybe even vitamin C at those levels, you would, uh, it might be fatal or serious uh, damage would occur. I think that's, that sounds amazing. So it's also incredibly safe. You can actually mm -hmm. take a decent amount of it. Where do you source your C60 from? Where does C60 actually come from in nature? Well, it was first discovered uh, that the mystery of why they got the Nobel Prize is it's found between the stars. It's made in giant red stars. And what happens is for people, astronomy lesson, our, our sun burns hydrogen into helium right now and that's and then but eventually it's going to run out of hydrogen and at that point it's going to take helium and burn it into carbon well that burns a lot hotter so the sun puffs up into a giant red into a giant red star and it's so big it kind of boils off its atmosphere which is very carbon rich and in that atmosphere as the atmosphere boils off it's uh it produces carbon 60 and that's actually how we make it in the lab uh you basically have a chamber we got two carbon rods you run electricity through them in a light helium atmosphere, like one tenth the pressure of, of Earth's atmosphere. And if you do it right, you can turn about 10% of that carbon into carbon 60. And then the hard part comes is separating. And in our case, we, uh, we use sublimation. And if you remember your high school chemistry class, sublimation is like evaporation. It's when a solid turns into a gas and then back into a solid. So we put the C60 on one side of the sublimator heat it up to about 400 degrees Celsius, and it sublimates into a gas, floats to the other side, and where it condenses on plates, and that's how you can get 99.99% pure C60. Now, some producers use sublimated, but a lot of other producers, like they, they, if you ever hear oven bake, they use actually a solvent-based method, where they take methyl benzene, a toluene, which is kind of a nasty chemical, and they use it to dissolve the C60, and then they run it through diffusion, uh, columns, which eventually separates it. Then they've got to flush it out. And then you have C60 with solvents and they got to bake it repeatedly in a, a vacuum oven to get rid of the solvents, but you never really get rid of it completely. So, but with our, with sublimated C60, it's never been exposed to solvents. That's never going to be a problem. Always, I always think it's funny when people make something that is supposed to be designed to make you healthier, but the process in which they do it is not really a healthy process, or you might be getting side effects to the process, like, you know, you don't want anything that is a solvent. Usually you're trying to actually clean yourself out of any solvent. So I, I always find that funny. Same with almost any supplement company when I'm looking at them and you start to see all the different artifacts of things that are in there that don't really need to be in there.
And a lot of times I think piggy, people piggyback off of certain research. So people hear something and then they think something's good and then they think it's all the same. So most of the time, especially when you start to look through the, the supplement industry, it's like all supplements are not created equal and you do need to kind of do your due diligence to go through and check things out. So that was one thing that I thought was really great because it's also, it's a, it's a lot more time consuming. It's a lot more money to have to do certain things in a different way, but you know, you're doing it the right way. Yeah. Most, most of the C60 producers out there are pretty good. It's, it's kind of, C60 is kind of a, uh, we, there's just a handful of us when the market started. In fact, it was that internet person that talked about my C60, which really blew it all up. And most of the people are legitimate, do a good job. We've had, but just like the CB industry, CBD industry, we've had like a lot of people jump in, which are really using substandard uh, products and stuff. It's just, but I think that's just part of, you know, any industry like that. You, you get that problem when it gets to a certain level. Yeah, so, for sure. So we, yeah, and most of the, I know a lot of the producers, and we're all trying to make a quality product for our customers. And uh, that's important uh, that we do, because we use it ourselves, our family and ourselves, and we use it, so. We want to make sure we have the very best uh, product we can get. Yeah, exactly. Now, you had talked about the difference between the antioxidants and the free radical load or the oxidation and reduction. And I think that's a really important part too. And as to why we often require a little bit of additional support sometimes in the arena of antioxidants. So you mentioned free radicals. Maybe explain a little bit about how do we actually generate free radicals? What are we getting free radicals from? Why do we need to have a little bit additional antioxidant support sometimes? Well, free radicals are basically atoms that have been basically stripped of a, a, a molecule that's been stripped of an atom and there's like a free electron floating around. Like one of the ones like radiation, ionizing radiation causes the hydroxyl route. And that's basically where a proton has been torn off of the, uh, the a high, uh, water molecule and now there's just an electron, which is wants to bind with something. So usually that oxidative radical would bind with a molecule. And then that would turn that molecule into an oxidative radical. It's unstable, which then would go to another. And you get a whole chain reaction. And it's destroying all these important molecules in your body. And it's, it's similar. You might think of oxidative radicals as rusting. Your body is basically rusting. And, uh, and that causes damage. Now, it events leads to inflammation because when you have a bunch of oxidative radicals, things like the macrophages and other and cells that get damaged, they're going to send out cytokines, which, which uh, bring in uh, neurophils and other, you know, white blood cells that says, Hey, there's a problem here. There's being damaged. So then you, now you've got inflammation and then all the problems that go with that. And, and you want, that's something you want to avoid. And it, it's the chronic inflammation. There's two, let's talk about the inflammation caused by oxidative radicals. There's like acute, let's say you twist your ankle, right? That, that's, that's an important thing. You know, you, you, the, there's damage done, the macrophages go in, they activate cytokines, they bring in neurophils, that the, the, which cause the capillaries to leak. And, uh, you know, you're, it gets immobilized. So it increases the blood flow. You've got, I mean, that's good. That's good at how to heal an injury. What's bad is chronic inflammation. And that's like arthritis, uh, a lot of the gut issues people have, especially gut issues and a whole bunch of other minor things that, uh, that people get autoimmune is sort of like that, which that's usually associated with the gut. And these, this, is, uh, this is really serious because about 50% of the deaths happen today, we call it degenerative diseases, are associated with diseases stemming from inflammation. I mean, you, it's, that's what heart disease is, basically, because uh, your cholesterol gets oxidized, LDL cholesterol starts collecting on the inside of your thing and then there's on your arteries. And, uh, and of course, arthritis, and just, they're just a, so a plethora. Now like 50% of the deaths come from that. And especially because in the old days, a lot of us died from infectious diseases and other things before we reach, you know, gray hair age. Well, you know, we've defeated infectious diseases and a lot of other things, breaks, burns, things like that. Allopathic medicine has its place, but uh, it doesn't really do very effective at diseases associated with aging, degenerative diseases, which almost all spring from inflammation. Yeah, inflammation is basically the cornerstone for just about all disease. And so 
just as practically for people when you are thinking about free radical load and how are you accumulating free radicals a big part of it is just living being alive breathing oxygen you're going to you're going to acquire a certain amount of free radicals it's natural and then there's the additional overexposure to certain things that are going to cause that much more so this comes back down to what's in your water, what's in your air, what's your lifestyle like, what's your, what's your stress levels like, a lot of these different things. And so that's where sometimes I think it's beneficial to have certain supplementation to assist all of the other stuff that's going on in our lives, especially at this point in time. Yeah. And, and another thing is you get older, the cell, you know, the mitochondria are like the powerhouses of your cell and they produce ATP and uh, other substances critical to function. And as we get older, uh, the larger cell provides them antioxidants. And that tends to go down as we get older. So they're not getting as much SOD and uh, catalase. So they basically, they, they, they're kind of like self-regulating bodies. They got their own DNA in them. And so they have, they're forced to turn down the furnace basically and can't produce as much ATP or pregnenolone that your body needs. And when you take C60, it completely replaces those missing ones. And that's important because SOD, catalase, glutathione, they can't be supplemented. You can take some of the precursors, but your cells still have to make it. And if there's impairment in the cells functioning of making those antioxidants, antioxidants then you've got problems. Your mitochondria shut down. The C60, you take it, completely brings, replaces those missing ones. Now, you're, now your mitochondria can work and you get ATP production. And, and, and that's one of the first things people notice with C60. You get a little bit more energy, clarity of thought, just everything seems to work better. That's because it's producing ATP, which is the energy molecule for the cell does like 95% of the job in the cell. And so when that returns to higher levels, like when you were younger, then, uh, then you, you, you notice it and you have improved health. It's always nice when you work on systems, you know, a lot of times people go to the doctor and they're usually have got all of their symptoms and you're kind of looking for something for every symptom. But if you can kind of get down to the core of it and you can kind of figure out what is the, what's the underlying root, which often means you have to kind of take more of a systems approach to things. Because when you start to correct certain systems, a lot of the symptoms start to disappear. So if you can kind of get down at correcting something like mitochondrial function, increasing ATP energy, all of a sudden a lot of stuff starts to change in the body without you having to go symptom hunting one thing after another. So it brings me to my next question where you've, you've actually been, you've mentioned that C60 is like the Swiss army knife of antioxidants. I think that's a, that's a fun way to talk about it. So, and it is because when you look at the, the literature on it, I mean, everything from anti-aging and wrinkles to, you know, cardiovascular to cancers, I mean, you, you name it, it could be related to almost anything. So how does one specific compound have such a broad spectrum of effects? Well, first off, I want to say C60 doesn't heal or cure anything. What it does, it lifts the oxidative burden that your cells are under. And once that burden has been lifted off your cells, then they can function the way that they're supposed to be. And, uh, and then health returns like uh, C60 is lipophilic. So it likes to hang out in the endoplasmic reticulum where the ribosomes are. That's where your proteins are made and a lot of other important things. And so if your proteins can be made without being damaged, a, they aren't going to be sent to the vesicles for reprocessing. They'll just come out and then the body can build itself. And also the mitochondria. That's where, you know, if you've got, if you've got uh, mitochondria that aren't functioning fully, C60 can, can restore that because now the mitochondria don't damage themselves in their everyday production because they have enough antioxidant. You got your ATP. And then another thing that mitochondria do is they make pregnenolone, which is the precursor molecule for all the hormones. And when your pregnenolone levels go up, uh, then, of course, now you can, your hormone levels go way up to uh, all the hormones, like your pineal gland, you'll get your melatonin production back. Your pituitary gland, you'll get uh, your human growth hormone and a whole bunch of uh, important hormones because the pituitary H and the hypo hypocampus are like just, they're, they're like the master gland of the body. I uh, like uh, Sierra, she's our sort of IT person and marketing she had uh, zero function in, she had Hashimoto's, zero function in the thyroid. After taking C60 for about two years, she got rid of two thirds of her medicine. So, so that's, a, uh, that's another thing. And, and by the way, one of the things, like if you look at heart disease, it's created by LDL cholesterol. Basically what happens is in the body, LDL cholesterol is turned into the, by the mitochondria into pregnenolone. And as we get older, that process slows down. So the LDL cholesterol starts building up in the blood and it stays there a long time, it gets oxidated. 
And then that's when it, oxidated cholesterol starts collecting on the inside of your arteries and your heart disease starts right there. So if you can get that LDL to get processed into pregnenolone or other important substances, then it doesn't build up in your bloodstream, it doesn't oxidize, and you don't, and it, which is of course inflammation too, because when it's sticking to your arteries, causes inflammation, they respond by putting calcium layers down and you just, and then of course that causes more problems. It's just a uh, kind of one of those snowball going down the hill situations. Well, and you can also see where then that takes you down other problems because then all of a sudden it's like, then you get put on something to try to restrict your cholesterol production, which most of the time isn't actually the problem. The problem is more the oxidation of the cholesterol, the inflammation and the free radical load. So then you kind of, if that doesn't get corrected, you're actually sometimes even adding a potentially another problem to the mix too. Oh yeah. That's common in, you know, the allopathic medicine system, you know, one drug causes side effects and they have a drug to deal with that side effect, which then causes another side effect. And I mean, frankly, if you've got five or six drugs in your body, I mean, as a scientist, you look at all, it's become so, so complicated. It's very hard to figure out what's causing what's, where's going that. It just becomes very difficult. It's much better to, to fix the problem at the core and not have to use those, those various things. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where C60 is like a Swiss army knife that's going to do the job of SOD. And it, it's in our mitochondria, uh, mitochondria burn, they're like the powerhouses, right? It's a furnace, right? It's turning, uh, turning sugars and fats into, into ATP. And, and in the process, it makes like super oxygen. And usually what SOD, superoxide distributed, will turn that super oxygen into hydrogen peroxide. Then catalase will come in, turn that hydrogen peroxide into a water and an oxygen again. And what well, we'll C60 can turn, it's, it's kind of a unique mole molecule because it, it likes to get a positive charge, but it doesn't give a positive charge by releasing electron in the solution like most molecules. It actually pulls like a hydrogen ion from the environment inside of its cage-like structure. And then what happens, say an oxidative radical comes by like hydroxyl radical, which is negatively charged. This is positively charged. It'll stick to this one. The C60 will release a hydrogen ion, neutralize say hydroxyl radical back to water with super oxygen, it just steals the electron, gives it to one of the hydrogen ions, making it a hydrogen atom. And, and then it can reset itself hundreds or thousands of times a second. And that's why it's, uh, it's such an, uh, an amazing antioxidant. It's characterized as several hundred times more uh, effective than uh, let's say vitamin C or other antioxidants. But there, now there's a, now how is that possible? One of the things is C60 fits exactly into the groove of the RNA molecule and the side groove of the DNA molecule. And one of the ways C60 is made in nature is through meteoritic impacts. So whenever big meteorites, that's like the KT boundary that wiped out the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. One of the ways that they know that that's a meteoric impact is they kind of C60 in that sedimentary layer. So on the early earth, there was probably, because this is hydrophobic, so it floats on water, but it's fat loving. So primitive fats created by abiotic processes and amino acids and hydrogen gas would all stick to this. So it's a possibility, you know, on the edge of some ancient sea you know, there were little geologic deposits of C60, amino acids, lipids, and hydrogen gas, and might even have provided the scaffolding for RNA and DNA chemistry to evolve. And that's why one of the reasons, even at, you know, 10,000 times what a person might be taking, it has no toxic effect because it might have been the original scaffolding of life. <laughs> that's fascinating. And how much does generally somebody need to take and how often do they need to take it to start to see some of the benefits? Well, usually it's been taking take it every day and also in the morning because it has a stimulatory effect. And, and um, the amount you take is dependent on your body size and your age. So like a person, let's say in their mid thirties up to let's say 170 pounds, 160 pounds, uh, a teaspoon a day would be fine in the morning. And uh, we, we have it in avocado and olive oil hold the same amount of C60. And, but coconut, we have MCT coconut oil, which holds about half the amount, less than half the amount of C60 because it's a short train triglyceride. But we provide that like Gary Rodriguez, my engineer, he had the uh, diabetes. So if you've got a glucose problem, MCT coconut oil is, is just fantastic. You just take a little bit more because of that your liver can turn the MCT, the medium chain triglycerides into ketones, which then your cells can use as an alternative energy source. So it's like flex fuel for your body. And if you've got glucose processing issues, that's really important. And now the other thing is that age. If, if you're big, you know, let's say you're 220, 230, 
you might, a, a tablespoon a day would be more appropriate. And if you age, because as we age, the antioxidants produced by our cells go down. So like if you're in your 60s or 70s, uh, a tablespoon a day would be more appropriate. Outside, I mean, I, I'll, I'm always looking as a clinician, I'm always looking to see both subjective and objective markers for change. So I always like to see that the person's feeling better, that they are, whatever their ailment was, that they're seeing the improvements in it. I think markers always for people to check are things like, how's your energy? How's your digestion? What's your sleep like? Like all of these sort of parameters of health. And then it's also nice to see certain objective markers. Are there any specific objective markers that, so that could be something like, we might look at certain free radical tests, or we might look at certain inflammation markers or things like this. Is there anything specific that people could look for when they've been taking C60 that they might see start to change? Well, C60, you know, lifts the oxidative burden, so everything works better. But people that take C60 definitely see improvements in their blood work. So if you've had blood work before the C60 and you come back, it gets all, all across the board. Oh, one thing, there should be a little warning with C60. One of the things, if you're taking a blood thinner and you take C60, because C60 creates production of pregnenolone, and in your adrenal glands, that's going to make the mineral corticoids. And also the T3 and T4 will probably go up. And that's what regulates uh, blood thickness. So the underlying cause of your thick blood would go away. And then if you're taking a blood thinner, then your blood would become too thin. So you need to monitor with your doctor if, uh, if you had a blood thinners and you take C60 because that can change really rapidly. And, and of course, the other things too is like the thyroid medications and hormone, you're taking hormone supplementation because when C60 gets in there, pregnenolone goes up. So that means all the hormones rise to like when, they were, when you were much younger. So if you're taking a hormone supplement, you might not need to take as much. We have lots of that. And, and, but some of the places the C60 works great too is in the gut because it's taken internally. And so it gets into the gut, it fixes the intestinal villi. And because the intestinal villi, they stick together, that's the lining of your gut, by proteins that they excrete on the outside of their cell walls. And that allows them to stick together. Well, if you have a malfunction there, you're going to have a problem. C60 returns two ways it makes the ATP go up, but it also protects the endoplasmic reticulum where proteins are made. So now those cells are going to produce proteins, they're going to stick together you're not going to, uh, to get the leaky gut. But, and, and so that's, that's another thing. But it's also great topically. They actually did a Japanese, one of the, some of the, the human studies, in fact, the first was uh, the Japanese, they had a cream with C60 in it. And so they had like a full placebo double blind study and it significantly reduced wrinkles in, uh, in those Japanese women. Well, that's one that usually everybody is always on board with. So when you, when you get into any kind of thing, health, it's usually often a lot of times cosmetics that seem to grab people's attention first. And then whenever you're correcting cosmetics from the inside, you're often doing multiple other benefits to the body, even though you're starting to see it from the cosmetics. So I know when I was looking at some of the stuff on C60 and anti-aging, so when they were talking about cosmetically, it'd be like lowering wrinkles and UV damage and that type of stuff on the skin, which a lot of people, and there's a huge market for skin products where most times we do better to actually do something internally even to start with. But when I started to look at C60, it was improving a number of different things. So outside of it just being a potent free radical scavenger, a strong antioxidant, it also actually affected adult stem cell production and also worked with... Um, it was protecting the telomeres as well, which is all like, those are profound markers for, for aging. Yeah. We were mystified exactly how that was going. Cause we had a guy and he was uh, 54 and he went in, this is before he was started using C60 and he had a telomere length of a 53 year old. That's not unremarkable. After about three and a half years on C60, he went back in to get another one just routinely. And he had the telomere levels of a 38 year old. Now, how did this happen? Well, it, we don't think, obviously, if you have an antioxidant, when every time your telomeres, by the way, are like little strings, D, DNA strings on the end of your chromosomes, and every time your cells divide, it gets a little shorter until eventually the strings are too short, your cell can't divide anymore. And uh, that's called senescent, senescent cells. Well, so we were, how is that? Now, obviously, if like usually you would only use 20 genetic units you lose on the telomeres, if in a perfect division, right? But in reality, because there's so much oxidative damage and things going on in the cells, you lose like 50 to 100. So obviously C60 as, a, uh, as an antioxidant could reduce 
the amount of telomere loss, but how would it like restore telomere length? And, but what we found out it wasn't doing that. What happens is when C60, when you have a senescent cell, it doesn't really want to die, it, uh, but it, it doesn't, it, it can't really function anymore. So one of the things that it creates, it creates more acidity inside the cell, also stops providing more antioxidants to the mitochondria, they have to shut down and it starts running on more on fermentation which is like 1 20th as efficient as the ATP cycle. Well, when C60 gets into those senescent cells, it restarts the mitochondria. And obviously ATP comes back pregnenolone, but those mitochondria send messages to the nuclear DNA of the cell and says, hey, we need to divide, we need to do this. And if they don't get the right message back, it causes apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, which doesn't cause inflammation. The cell breaks down into little apoptotic bodies and the macrophages, phagocytes come in and clean it up real well without uh, Without And so what C60 appears to be doing, it wipes out senescent cells. And then the body obviously says, now your organ has less cells than it needs. So it sends out messages to, to the stem cells and say, hey, we need more of you guys to start dividing and come in and replace it. And like we've had a, we had a guy, uh, he was in his seventies and he came in and he, he you know, was doing stem cell therapy. And he came in after he takes C60, went into a stem cell therapy and the guys came rushing in and said, well, this is the, you know, the highest, one of the highest stem cell counts we've ever seen. And he's in his 70s, like up to 20 year old. We used to have a, a Russian billionaire. He was, uh, he has to come in five or six times to get enough stem cells for the blood draw, to get enough for treatment. Now he just goes in and gets one, one draw, gets enough stem cells. And so what we think what happened is that how that guy's telomere length got longer is it wiped out a lot of the senescent cells. And then those senescent cells were replaced by stem cells, which have a full length telomeres, right? And then they differentiate into whatever tissue type is needed. In this case, it'd be like the lining of the cheek. And then, so when you take a, a telomere test, the, you, you take like, they've taken hundreds or thousands of cells, and then they just take those cells together, pull out the DNA, and then check the telomere length. And so it's an average of telomere length. So what's happened is the senescent cells have been wiped out. They've been replaced with uh, stem cells, which have almost a full telomere length. And in that way, uh, average telomere length for the people got longer. In a sense, you got younger. You're literally getting younger. Yeah, it, uh, it's like growing younger. That's what you want to do is grow younger, where your age seems to go up, but your biological age seems to go down. <laughs> and it's actually amazing. You'll see that pretty, pretty often when people start to really take control of their health. I mean, I've seen some patients coming in where they've been in their 30s, and I, I, I've almost initially thought that they were actually around 50 or something. And then by the time they're all done and later on, once they've actually implemented a lot of different treatment, they start to really take ownership of their health. You can check these markers and see how much more improvement there is. So I also think that's fascinating around the mitochondria function because that's been such a big that's been such a big player in the, I mean, at least in the last five to 10 years, I'd say that's really started to come up as a lot of people suffer with mitochondrial dysfunction. So I think a lot of it has to do with just what people are kind of inundated with in, on the planet in general. Even oh. things like if anybody's ever had exposure to molds or something like that, that's a really devastating one on mitochondrial function. So Something like this, I, I think I, that would actually be really curious to see, even people that have had chronic mold exposure being on C60, I'd be really curious to see how that lights back up their mitochondrial function. Well, it, it has, C60 really helps people with allergies. You've had a lot of people, they say, I don't have allergies anymore after taking it for, and, and you know, C60 doesn't heal anything. And also if you had a chronic condition that's been around for a long time, it's not gonna go away tomorrow. This is not something where you get the magic pill that's suddenly gonna go away. It's, it's gonna take a while and the longer you've had it, the longer it's gonna take for your body to heal. And also, you know, and C60 doesn't replace a uh, good diet. It doesn't replace uh, like supplementation because a lot of our foods today are so low on minerals, uh, exercise, sleep, and, and a stress-free environment or reducing stress to the sense you, to the scent. It won't replace any of those. You still have to take active control of your health. You have to do all of these things. C60 can help but you've got to make the first step toward health by doing all the different things like eating organic so you don't get glyphosate. Because glyphosate is so toxic, goes in, wipes out the microbiotics in your, in your intestine, and then you, you're get, you get inflammatory disease, you can't digest your food. I mean, there's just so many things you need to do to, uh, to, in, to, in these days to take care of your health. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you never, you can never, anytime someone tells you that you can uh, completely leave all of the fundamentals and take something, um, I would second guess it. It's like a patient I had that um, had cancer and their doctor said they could eat whatever they want. Didn't make any difference. Um, although they actually told them, make sure that you don't take fresh vegetable juices because it was too many antioxidants. See, that's just, yeah, that's what you can <clears throat> But they were okay to do canned vegetable juices. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, yeah. It's, okay. it's sometimes where I think, um, you know, you, you start to just lose a certain degree of common sense after a while with certain things. But mm -hmm. I think that all sounds really fascinating. And Ken, is there anything else before we finish up here? Is there anything else, any other points that you want to mention about C60 before we show people where they can go to, to learn more about it? Well, I mean, learning more about it is important. It's, it's uh, I mean, it does so many different things. That's, uh, but, it's, but it's really your body healing itself. All your body needs is get that oxidative burden off. And then like it strengthens your immune system. You know, so many people, you know, they take C60, everybody in the office gets sick, they don't. Um, and like when, you, when your muscles, when your testosterone levels rise, like guys, especially working out, uh, once you get your, you know, pregnenolone comes back, your testosterone rise, you can start building muscle mass. And, and it also slows the lactic acid. Build. Athletes love C60 because it's a, we have a lot of athletes that are at the top of their field now because of C60. It's just, yeah. especially if you're younger, it gives you that little edge if you're an athlete. If you're older, it lets you catch back up the way that you were when you were younger. So it just does all these uh, amazing things that, uh, and we're learning more every day because there's lots of animal studies and it shows like it's that, that have shown all kinds of efficacy in just dozens of different places in of health issues that animals have. And uh, there is some studies on humans now. We have a few already. There's more coming on. But uh, I mean, it's really something. It's, you, if you want to take control of your health, I mean, you can go to the c60purplepower.com. That's our website. And you can, there's links to the science. You can read the science papers yourself. You can learn about it. We got a lot of testimonials of how it has helped people. I mean, a lot of this is anecdotal because the human research the human uh, studies aren't, aren't all the way in. I mean, it doubled the lifespan of test animals, but you know, these are rats, right? They, they have a very short lifespan. So a lot of the long-term benefits of C60, which mm -hmm. we're probably gonna be seeing in humans, aren't gonna be around for a while, right? Decades or longer. And especially because this is like the cutting edge of the cutting edge. It's not even in the pre-adapted state. So if you're hearing about C60, you're one of very few people who know about it. It's getting more knowledgeable, but it's pretty unknown. So, I mean, anything else, you know, don't take my word for it or anybody else's word for anything. Even your doctors, you know, you need to go out and dump, check it out yourself. Do your own research and make your own decisions because you're the one ultimately responsible for your health. And, uh, and yes, and also, you know, C60 is, uh, is one of those things, but it, and it does, but it doesn't replace all the other things that you need to do. It's just something that can get you over the edge because, look, I mean, you go out to eat, right? you're never going to be perfect. Maybe you have a little bit too much alcohol at celebrations. That's another thing we people use. They find if you take like a shot of C60 before you drink and then afterwards, mm -hmm. uh, you don't get a hangover the next day because, you know, the hangover is caused by oxidative damage. And so it prevents that, which is kind of a moral hazard, but, uh, <laughs> but, it, has, but it has benefits. It's so one of those social health choices that you make, yeah. you make every once in a while. Yeah. So C60 kind of does that when all, you know, nobody's perfect and you can't even, I mean, don't even try for perfect. Just, you know, move toward, do the best you can, but there's always going to be the, and that's where C60 kind of comes in, just covers those multitudes of uh, health sins and, uh, and the toxins we're exposed to because, you know, look at the, the 5G stuff. Uh, you got, you know, stuff degassing from the plastics and carpets in your house. You've got, you know, radiation from, you know, guys, Chernobyl and uh, Fukushima. I mean, they're just so, and then, and the 80,000 industrial chemicals, which never existed before. Yeah. Uh, and, and we can go into those. They're just vast numbers of them. They're in your cosmetics. They're in the food, the lining, the packages, the plantates, the, the, uh, the other estrogen mimics. It's just, I mean, there's just so many things, the forever chemicals, those uh, brominated and fluorided. I mean, there's just so many. And, and, and most toxins, as they break down, they produce oxidative radicals, and it's those oxidative radicals that cause the problem. So if you get rid of those oxidative radicals before the damage, that's what's really important is, um, you know, preventing. And like the test, the animals have doubled their age. These were Worcester rats. They're kind of like wussy rats. You know, you can bleed <laughs> on them and they keel over. And they especially die of, uh, of cancers and other diseases associated with 
aging. They kind of like fast aging rats. And that's in the C60, it completely prevented the occurrence of cancers and those other diseases associated with aging. And that's why it basically it doubled their lifespan. You know, I use it myself. It's just transformed my life and the people around me and do the research, check it out. You can do the testimonials, maybe even talk to somebody who's been using C60 and uh, make up your own health decision. Well, I think that's good advice for everything. It's like, you don't just trust anything. See if something resonates and then explore it. See it, let it try it out on your body and see how it actually feels. Give it a time to actually allow things. You got to remember a lot of times when people have had health problems, they've had them for a long time. So in the natural health world, you're not expecting symptoms to just disappear right away because you're correcting underlying problems. And it usually took many years to develop those problems in the first place. So you're starting to kind of slowly turn the clock back. And you'll hear me talk lots about, anybody who's followed me for a while, will hear me always talk about resilience. And to me, it is always this balance then of removing the logs in the fire that don't have to be there, right? That's like healthy diet, that's like healthy lifestyle, all of these types of things that you hear me talk about lots. And then the other part is building resilience. So it's what do you add in to sort of give you an extra edge, given that we are inundated by more stuff than say our grandparents, substantially more stuff. It's just the world we live in is different. I would say from everything from EMFs to chemicals in our food and in our water to the degree of stress that most people are under, all of those things have a physiological effect. So and any logs you can remove from the fire helps to lower the load and then add the supports that you can. And in my mind, C60's got a good place for that additional support for just living an overall healthy life. Yeah, because what's the use of living long if you're not living healthy? Exactly. Well, and that's been a big change too. I think for a long time, it was around living longer. And I find most people don't care too much about the idea of actually long life. Not that they probably don't want to live longer, but it's like, it's all the things they want to do. They're like, you know, my knees ache so much, I can't get down and play with my grandkids anymore, you know, or I can't go for a walk with my partner. These are the types of things where then the quality of life, that, that's more what it's about. How do you maximize your quality of life? Ken, thank you so much. So what's, where can we send people to learn more of the work? You'll hear me talk about this through the different episodes as well, and I'll have links in the show notes. But um, from your perspective there, Ken, when can we send people to learn more about everything? Well, there's two main places you can go. You go to c60purplepower.com. That's our website. And then you can link off there into science. And you can get science links. You can read the act, link to the science paper. So you can actually read those. You can go see testimonials. But what other people might find even more useful is we have on YouTube, we have a the C60 Purple Power channel. And if you go in there, we have like 50 to 60 shows now. And it's on how C60 can help with any specific health problem you have. And we also talk about what causes that health problem and, and other, other ways that you can, you know, help mo moderate that health problem, not just C60. But so we discuss all of those different health problems, what you can do to help yourself and, uh, and how C60 can assist in that process. Because that's what C60 does. It assists in your body's healing. Wonderful. Yeah, the website's set up really well. I love that you've got links to a lot of the different research and it's easy and accessible for people. And check out there. I'll make sure I've got the, the show in the show notes oh, here for you oh too. Yeah. And we do have a coupon code. Yeah, so the coupon code, go to, um, go to, I'll have the link in the show notes and then just plug in Dr. Loken, capital D, capital R, capital L-O-K-E-N, and you will get 15% off your Purple Power order. Okay, excellent. Wonderful. Ken, what a pleasure to talk to you. And we'll do this again in a few months or so and uh, touch base and maybe break down some of the specific things, different, all of the specific um areas that people can actually really show benefits from in the C60. That might be a fun episode to do as well. Yes, I look forward to that. And it's uh, very specific in each spot of how it can help. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, that was awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to invest in your health and well-being. Since this podcast is brand new, reviews and subscribers are so vital for us to get off the ground and share this really important information. So if you found this information valuable, please post a review and subscribe to the podcast so you'll get our newest episodes. Also, if you know of someone who would benefit from this, please share it with them. You can also find us on Instagram at hashtag inspirehealthpodcast. If you have a question that you'd like to be addressed, direct message me on Instagram or leave a comment on one of my posts. I would love to hear from you. 
and you can grab our show notes and free resources for each episode at inspirehelppodcast.com. So be sure to go online and check it out.